Okay, uh, this is part four. We're going to start by sealing the stem onto the audion. Here, you got to be real steady. All right. Next thing, I have to cut this tip off and cut this off at the right level, uh, right length. Okay. The diamond saw makes cutting the glass very convenient. I, I've, I've seen people try using, you know, pieces of nichrome wire. You know, they cut a little slot and take nichrome wire and stuff and heat it up. You know, it, it just is not practical. It's just not practical. You got to have a uh, something professional to do that cutting with. Oh yeah. Okay. I have the envelope mounted in the chuck. I have the filament assembly mounted in the uh, wire holder. Now, I'm going to very carefully move the filament. It's going up inside the tube. And I'm just going to position it to where the filament is very, very close to the grid. We want the filament grid spacing to be very tight. All right, first we're going to warm it up a little bit. This is small diameter tubing, so there's not a lot of chance of it shattering. But I still have to be very careful now of those filament wires. I hate it. I can burn those suckers off just like I did the other one. Okay, we're up to flaring, so I'm going to go ahead and heat the torch up. Okay, very hot tip. Okay, I'm going to just heat this up and fuse the glass. This is taking the filament and fusing the uh, two pieces of tubing together. I'm just bringing it up to molten and letting it just collapse in on itself. Open the hole up with the carbon tool. Okay, then I'm going to move Just a little bit of annealing here. 
very unlikely to have it cracked here. And that's it. And there's our spherical audion. All right, next we're going to connect the, the audion onto the vacuum system. Okay, we'll just slip that nut onto here. Take our O-ring, put it on there. Put a little vacuum grease to make sure it seals good. See, the way this thing works is the seat there, it's got an angle to it. So when you tighten this nut down, it, it, it forces that O-ring down into that uh, angled groove and that squishes it against the glass and against the uh, side of the brass piece and forms a hermetic seal. Okay, the next thing to do is we'll check it to see that we don't have any leaks. I don't think we will. I mean, this was a fairly good glass job, but you never can tell. This is a handheld uh, spark coil. It just generates a little spark and we use that just to test the glass. Now I'm going to open the um, roughing valve. We're clear. We have no leaks. If we had a leak, it would jump to the glass and, and jump through, but we see here See, we're not even getting a blue glow anymore from the air. The air pressure's gone down so far, we don't even get any blue glow anymore. Now we'll go ahead and um, uh, put the oven on it. Now our oven just has a, uh, a spiral of um, nichrome wire, and it heats up to 1,000 degrees in there. We just put that down over the tube. plate here to seal the bottom off and the top plate to seal the top off and we just plug that in go ahead and start the vacuum system up and we'll just let it run for about four hours okay we've been pumping for about three hours now I've shut the oven off and we're sitting at a pressure of about three and a half times 10 to the minus sixth torr. So we're way down there. The tube is really well pumped. Okay, I've got our uh, GM tester hooked onto the tube. Um, and what I'm going to do, I've got the uh, plate voltage set at about 67. I'm going to just bring the filament up until we get some um, emission. Okay. This is our plate current. We're up to about a half a milliamp. What we have to do is drive the air out of the filament. The filament's made out of tungsten, just like the rest of it. So um, when we heat it, the air is evolved out of it, and that's being sucked out of the um, tube now by the vacuum pump. It takes it a while to go down there through that um, stem. Okay, got about 90 volts on the uh, plate. About three volts on the filament. We got about a milliamp and a half of plate current. We're reading a transconductance of 75. That's about typical for a single wing out of here. So we're just going to let that corrugated tungsten bake for a few minutes. Um, what that does is it brings the thorium out onto the surface of the tungsten and um, just kind of processes the tube. Okay, there we are with 300 volts on the plate. We're getting about about 8 milliamps of uh, plate current and about 120 transconductance. Okay, that should be good enough. The next thing to do is to flash the getter and then seal the tube off. Okay, we've got the getter flasher connected up and um, 
we'll go ahead and flash it. And you can see the getter down inside there. Heating up to red hot. It evolves a bunch of gas when it's happening. Fifth floor down below. Okay, we'll try again. Okay. I'm, what I'm doing is I'm watching the pressure gauge down below and as the pressure comes up I let off on the heat and let it just pump down. Alright, we're going to flash it. Here it goes. You can see the metal flashing out on there. That's it. Now this is one of the more nasty parts of making the tube. We, we're going to heat the, this evacuation stem and seal it off. If we overdo it, then the glass pops through and ruins the tube. So I'm just going to take it real slow. Not much chance of popping the uh, breaking through on the uh, small tubing, but it could happen. I've lost a few tubes at this stage before. Ooh, start to squish in. Alright, it's squishing in on that side. Okay, there it goes. I'm just going to soften it up and we'll twist it. By twisting it, that seals it off. Okay, we're sealed off. There it is. Success. Okay, that's how a spherical audion tube is made. Um, if you enjoyed that uh, video, go ahead and keep an eye on my channel. I've got some really exotic tubes coming up that I'm going to be making here and um, I'll show how they're made. Uh, X-ray tubes, um, all kinds of uh, early radio tubes, um, Gissler tubes. I mean, there's some neat stuff.